Hello, and welcome to the first episode of a series in which I will be taking a look at transit systems across the U.S. and exploring how they can be improved. What better city to focus on in our first episode than the urbanist paradise that is Boston, Massachusetts? Before I share my thoughts on how Boston can improve its transit system, we have to take a look at how the network looks today. The MBTA, or Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority, operates public transit in and around Boston. Its comprehensive network consists largely of five modes. These are buses, ferries, commuter or regional rail, subways, and light rail. For the purposes of this video, I will primarily be focusing on the three modes that use rail vehicles, since the ferries are a comparatively insignificant part of the network, and the buses mainly just need more frequent service. This is Boston's rapid transit system. Well, maybe rapid is a little generous. This is Boston's rapid and green line transit system as it exists today. The system is compact, notable for serving dense, walkable neighborhoods across the region and not extending far out into the suburbs, as many other subway systems in the U.S. do. Known locally as the T, it is among the most heavily utilized urban rail systems in the United States. On top of the subway, or next to it, as is the case along many corridors, is the commuter rail system. This cluster of lines extends much further from the city center and into the surrounding cities and towns. Many of the areas served by the commuter rail system are very low density suburbs or are rural in nature, but the network also connects several important cities, including Salem, Brockton, Framingham, and even Providence. Given the length of most lines, all run express within the city, with the subway system providing more local service. Interchanges exist between the two networks in a few locations, including at Forest Hills, Quincy Center, and Malden Center, but there are many more opportunities for connections, and fares are separate, meaning a free transfer between the two modes is not possible, except with certain passes. The rapid transit system typically has service every 5 to 10 minutes, while commuter rail lines tend to be hourly all day. I want to add that in the time this video has been in production, the MBTA has endured several serious train fires and other incidents, and two lines are now undergoing month-long closures. The MBTA's impressive electrification plans, which poised it to become a national leader, have been downscaled to legally require using currently unproven battery technology. Now, more than ever, Boston is in need of better transit. Now that you are familiar with the MBTA system, I can offer my thoughts on what should be done to improve the network. First, let's talk about the light rail system, or the green line. It's really four lines in one, three of which operate primarily in dedicated lanes, and the D branch, which operates along a fully grade-separated former rail right-of-way. The four branches converge on a congested downtown tunnel, from where the line is now being extended to the north, with branches to Union Square and Tufts University. Now the thing to understand about the green line is that it is extremely slow. Last time I was in Boston, it took about 45 minutes to travel the three miles between North Station and the Museum of Fine Arts. Trains stop frequently in the tunnels, and the surface sections are slower than road traffic despite the fact that the trams have dedicated lanes. The two greatest improvements that could be made to the Green Line are a modern signaling system and transit signal priority on the surface sections, which prioritizes trains to get the green light instead of cars at intersections. This, combined with consolidating some of the surface stops, would speed up trips dramatically. If we really want to improve speed and reliability, we can quad-track the section of tunnel at Boylston and even, and I know this is basically illegal, straighten the Boylston curve a little. It appears there is enough room to give the E full dedicated right-of-way as long as on-street parking is removed. We will also assume fully low-floor LRVs and level boarding are rolled out across the system, for accessibility reasons. The first system expansion we will make is extending the D Ranch to Auburndale, where it can meet the commuter rail Worcester line. Or Worcester? Worsh? Worcester? Another commuter rail connection can be provided by adding an infill Medford Tufts station on the Lowell line. Now this is where things are going to get a bit complicated because what I see as the most efficient way to expand the light rail system results in several network reconfigurations. The recently opened Union Square branch is an odd one-stop spur following the Fitchburg commuter rail line and while an extension would be logical, there is limited right-of-way for a new light rail corridor paralleling the commuter rail line. So instead, I have the green line fully replacing the Fitchburg line all the way to a new transfer point between the two at Cedarwood. A branch of this line would follow an existing rail line into Watertown. The Fitchburg line, having been evicted from its core segment, would head down a new alignment paralleling I-95 and using the Worcester line to head into downtown. This would improve the frequency of service on both core lines, but it would also move all Fitchburg Line trains from North Station to South Station, potentially affecting rail traffic. So, 
further complicating things, I would shift the Worcester and Fitchburg lines onto the existing alignment through Cambridge, adding an underground pedestrian tunnel connecting the line's Kendall MIT station to the existing station of the same name on the red line. By using this alignment, two commuter rail lines are both moved back into North Station. I'll talk about why this change matters later. In the meantime, things are getting even crazier, because moving the Worcester line north means a long stretch of track has been left vacant between BU and Back Bay. We can extend the D branch down those free tracks all the way to Back Bay. From there, a short tunnel would be constructed to connect to the abandoned Tremont Street subway. The D would no longer interline with the other Green Line branches. To avoid making this confusing, the B, C, and E branches will maintain the Green Line designation, while the D will become part of a new pink line. From the downtown core, this line could head through North Boston in a tunnel up to Charlestown and Chelsea, then follow Highway 1 through dense areas currently unserved by rail. The line would terminate at a cluster of apartment buildings. This new pink line would be further extended at the other end near Newton, traveling south to Needham and replacing the Needham line as far as Needham Junction. Oh, there would also be a deviation to serve Needham north of Needham Heights. Okay, you can stop holding your breath now. I'm done saying Needham, for now, and the green line can finally rest. In its new form, it is much more expansive, and service frequencies and reliability can improve. With that chaos out of the way, let's look at the orange line. Many have suggested extending it all the way along the current Needham line, which would make sense if the orange line was a tram, but alas, that area is comparatively low density, and I've just replaced half the Needham line with the new pink line. I would extend the line as far as West Roxbury, where it would enter a short tunnel to connect to the VA Medical Center. So now every station on the Needham line has been replaced with some form of rapid transit service, except the enigma that is Hersey. I say enigma because for some inexplicable reason, this station in the middle of a forest surrounded by a golf course is the busiest station on the Needham line. Still, I refuse to extend the orange line there, so my admittedly awkward solution is to put in place a 4-mile light rail shuttle between Needham Junction and West Roxbury. Hopefully the 525 people who use Hersey Station daily will be able to put up with transferring to the much more frequent orange line. The rapid transit line that needs the most work is the blue line. Oh, poor blue line, you really need a lot of help. Climate change is not going to treat you well. Currently it's a little 6-mile line terminating in downtown. From Wonderland, the blue line would be extended to Lynn, where provisions already exist for such an extension. In addition to the obvious red-blue connector, it can be brought further west. Many have proposed replacing the green line's D branch, but in addition to over-serving the area, such an extension would result in the closure of one of the green line's largest maintenance facilities at Riverside. And of course, the pink line has now replaced that in my map. I instead propose having the line head through Back Bay East and swing over to replace the Fairmount line all the way to its terminus at Reedville. This would be a relatively cost-effective extension as the Fairmount line is already fully grade-separated and the neighborhoods it serves are quite dense. However, most Fairmount line stations are not near commercial development, and so we would see many new rapid transit stations in the middle of neighborhoods, like Shawmut. TOD would certainly help. There would also be a short tunnel spur to connect to Mattapan Station on the Ashmont Mattapan line. The commuter rail Reedville yard connects to the Fairmount line tracks but I suspect tracks connecting it to the northeast corridor would not be difficult to implement. It's worth noting that this isn't the only practical way to extend the Blue Line west. A more expensive, but potentially more useful, tunneled option is shown here in yellow. Our next target is the Red Line. Overall, it's arguably Boston's strongest transit line, minus the curve under Harvard, and so there isn't too much that needs to be altered. Many have proposed extensions all the way to Lexington via the Miniman Corridor right-of-way, but based on my understanding of the area, I'm not sure that Lexington needs rail rapid transit service. There are existing provisions to extend the line north, and so I believe it makes sense to take it along the corridor into Arlington on an elevated guideway over the trail. The line would terminate at the existing Arlington Heights bus loop, with frequent connecting buses to Lexington. I'm not totally set on this expansion, and it isn't the most important change that needs to be made to the red line. The main issue is where the Ashmont and Braintree branches split. They parallel each other for an excessively long distance and could just as easily use the same set of tracks. A new flying junction would be built between the two branches south of Savin Hill, allowing all red line trains to stop at the station and to use the same platforms at JFK UMass, improving the passenger experience. This will also allow the commuter rail line that parallels this section to be either double or triple tracked. The freed up platforms at JFK UMass will provide space for the terminus of Boston's first all-new transit line, an orbital route. 
I've mapped this line out as though it was a largely accurate light rail line, but it could just as easily be made into light metro if the demand is there. The line will start at JFK UMass and immediately enter dedicated median lanes on Columbia Road, turning into Massachusetts Avenue. It will interchange with the newly extended Blue Line at Newmarket, passing next to Boston Medical Center in the dense neighborhoods of the South End. Through Back Bay, the line connects to the Orange Line, all three Green Line branches, and the Pink Line before crossing the Charles River via a bridge. It will travel in the median of Memorial Drive and swing underground, connecting to Kendall MIT. It will then connect to the Green Line at Lechmere and offer a cross-platform transfer with the Orange Line at Community College using the existing second platform. This will serve as the terminus of the line. I'd like to talk a little more about the commuter rail network. The infamous north-south rail link should definitely be built, and I think the way it is currently being proposed is pretty well thought out. We'll have four electrified tracks and include a new central station interchanging with Aquarium on the Blue Line. The MBTA owns most of its own commuter rail tracks, and as such, every line should without a doubt receive some form of electrification. I'm not really in a place to say how best to electrify the network, but a sample concept is shown here. The dark purple lines would be electrified with overhead wires and have all-day frequent or semi-frequent service with EMU or electrical multiple unit trains. The light purple slash pink lines would be non-electrified and instead be served by bimodal battery electric trains continuing from electrified trackage. The light blue lines are interurban battery electric lines with partial electrification, with some of these lines being operated by the MBTA and others by other regional agencies. To be clear, these lines would still continue downtown, but would typically run express, with the purple lines running local. Where space is available, stations will be double-tracked and platforms will be constructed at every track, particularly along the new high-frequency corridor we created earlier between Newton and the city center. The Plymouth line will be extended to the true center of Plymouth, and the Fitchburg line will be taken to Gardner. The keen among you may have noticed one notable feature of the MBTA system that I have yet to mention, which is primarily because it is irrelevant and I don't like it. This is the Silver Line, which consists of two mid-tier rapid buses running down busy Washington Street, and three completely separate diesel trolleybus hybrid routes running in a tunnel between South Station and the South Boston waterfront, and then scattering in every direction. The Silver Line in its current form is kind of just... bad. My solution would be to combine the core sections into a new light rail line. It would begin at the cruise terminal, continuing through existing and new tunnels to Tufts Medical Center, where it would emerge as a tramway running down the median of Washington Street before ducking underground once more at the terminus at Nubian Station. This change deletes every BRT route, including SL1, which is the Silver Lines airport connection, but frankly, there are already too many ways to get to Boston Logan, and none of them really work. A new people mover at Logan Airport would facilitate better access to the Blue Line Airport Station, providing passengers with a reliable connection to downtown and beyond. The conversion of the Silver Line to Light Rail also leaves behind a busway in Chelsea, which I would use as part of an expanded BRT system, as shown here. Among the changes would be a new bus loop and bus connection at the Roslindale Village Station on the expanded Orange Line. With that, my vision for the MBTA's future expansion is complete. We started with a compact rapid transit and commuter rail system, and have built on this system to serve more of the region. Adding in BRT and rail trails, both existing and new, we have an entire urban transportation network. I have tried to keep costs at the front of mind, but included more expensive service expansions where they would do the most good. But these are just my thoughts. Feel free to let me know what you would do differently, or suggest changes I should make to this map. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.